Over the past two years, the Fair Work Commission has implemented a new program promoting cooperative and productive workplaces through its New Approaches initiative. New Approaches complements the Commission's traditional functions relating to bargaining and dispute resolution, introducing a formal process to assist parties to work together to facilitate change, foster innovation and prevent disputes. One recent New Approaches matter involved negotiations between the national stevedoring business Patrick and the MUA, the Maritime Union of Australia, ahead of a new enterprise agreement. Patrick operates a terminals business, loading and unloading shipping containers, and its bulk and general business, loading all other cargo that does not fit into traditional containers, such as long lengths of steel, grain, coal, timber, and a wide variety of vehicles. It's in this bulk and general division that the Commission's new approaches techniques have been applied. At the moment, I think it would be fair to say that the economic conditions are tough everywhere and I've not seen that line up as in every part of the business really working so hard to maintain its position uh, in the time that I've been in the business. You know, this is where good relationships, and again with our type business, it becomes so essential. So if we have a change in the way cargo is presented and a great change in appetite and support for things that give us conditions in the workplace, that really was the cry out that something had to change. And if we couldn't react, become more flexible, and meet the unmet needs of our customers, then we would simply wither on the vine. Industrial disputes on the waterfront have a history of being heated and high profile. With this backdrop, the Fair Work Commission is facilitating the Patrick and MUA New Approaches file under the guidance of Deputy President Anna Booth. Deputy President Booth has worked extensively with the parties to introduce a new way of negotiating, featuring interest-based bargaining, or IBB, techniques. Uh, so it started with a dispute over an enterprise agreement um, and from that we had a discussion about a new way of conducting industrial relations generally and the parties came together and talked about that and talked a lot about their interests, um, the interests of the business it's in its sustainability, the interests of the employees um, in their living standards, their quality of life in particular, the reliability um, of their shifts and so on and, and that led to um, a new approaches file. I've been on the war for uh, 25 years myself and so there's been, uh, it's been rocky to say, the, to say the least. So when I joined the business in 2014, we had over 50 issues at that point. It, it, it was really one of the most, um, uh, you know, dysfunctional relationships, um, industrial relationships that I'd ever um, experienced. I think in hindsight, we have very much fostered and endorsed an adversarial approach which has often been the company saying to its employees, here's the state of the nation, you must do this, do it. And the level of consultation in a broader context maybe hasn't been there as, as it should have been. Uh, we had picket lines in every position around the country after that. Absolute hatred, absolute animosities. So millions and millions of dollars were spent you know, in this business typically around legal costs. So we, we've been able through relationships on both sides generate huge savings in legal costs on both sides. An interest-based approach is where the parties sit down and actually talk about what their genuine real needs and concerns are rather than starting with the claim. So rather than starting with we want a 5% pay rise, we would begin by saying, well, um, what's the current living standard situation of the workforce? What's the current um, expenditure constraints or the, um, or the, the business um, situation of the employer? Um, and take quite a long time to understand you know, what the real needs are before coming to a, a particular outcome. And funnily enough, we've done that um, in Patrick BPS uh, just in a recent uh, round of enterprise bargaining. We find that get, we, we get better results um, we're getting better engagement with our employees by taking the approach, the interest-based approach. Any employer who thinks unions don't have a place is, is misguided and wrong about that. Unions have a place and they're a, a key part of our businesses moving forward and that collaboration needs to be there. And it is a maturing, I think, in business across all levels, be it through employee relations or even just in business itself, that collaborative approach that's needed, that mature approach, is born out of things like IBB. 
By going the interest-based approach, we've been able to, to harness you know, the interest of, of really base interests, you know, which are safety, security of employment, um, meeting customer needs. We are the bloodline of Australia and that's what we do. So we want to see strong, stable ports, good productive ports, and as do the union. And you know, we come from different parts or different spectrums at times, but there is a shared interest in success of the ports. And the new approach offered hope for us to say, if it works, could we increase our employee engagement? Could we deliver our customers more of what they want? Could we actually have an authentic and deep relationship with our employees and their bargaining representatives? We were sceptical to say the least, because uh, Patrick's management still was, you know, like Stephen or a company management and we've never actually sat around singing Kumbaya in a, in a room getting along very nicely. So it came down to um, the Deputy President Booth having to steer the process. So the material difference that we drew from interest-based bargaining, the new approach, was instead of sitting down as two or more parties and immediately defining my position, your position, which in our context might have been the union saying, we must have all permanent employees. And us saying, we can only survive in some locations if we have a casual pool to allow us to flex up and down. Traditional positional bargaining, we knew would take us in many cases to the commission. Under the new approach, we sat down and started to break down what was it that underpinned those positions and was there a way for both parties to find a common ground that wholly or substantially met the interests that they both had as opposed to positions? In interest-based bargaining, you actually talk, you know, the, for instance, in this EA, the MEOA was able to articulate we want more full-time permanent employment because employees want certainty, they want to be able to go and get loans, they want those sort of things that they can do. The framework of interest-based bargaining really opened up that true conversation about what's the heart of the issue that you're trying to solve for both people, for both parties. In order for this process to work, both parties actually have to have a bit of mutual respect and trust for each other and that's uh, it's pretty hard when you've you've been in, in disputation for so long. Look, very often the level of trust is low when we go into a process because of past experience, but you do need to start with a desire to build trust. And I think that the interest-based bargaining approach to negotiations is to both start from the same place, put your interests on the table, work through what our interests are, have a document that doesn't define the relationship, but certainly allows us to have a basis of trust we can move forward on. But the relationship between ourselves and the employer has to be more than what that agreement ends up like when it's finalised. We have to have an ability to talk about issues as they arise. Our interests over time will change. We don't have an honest relationship, this won't work. It does require a more mature approach. It also requires um, some fairly adept facilitating. So the Commission's done a fantastic job um, in helping the parties understand not just what the process was, but at times being a fairly tough referee? So first and foremost, it's definitely not a soft option. Um, it, it, it's one which is the mature option. It's, it's far more productive. Our union in particular is, is known for its strength, and, um, but that doesn't mean that you're, you're weak because you negotiate. Um, the strength is in actually um, ensuring that you don't sell your members out, that you get an outcome for your membership that they want. We've seen this to be nothing more than a great way of getting an outcome that's beneficial for both employer and employee and I think it's easy to see by the results. Well from the outside looking in, a new approaches conversation will look like a conciliation but where it will be different is that it's often conducted in the business's workplace, in their training rooms, in their um, perhaps uh, in the lunch rooms uh, with uh, employees and, and their representatives um, and it will also be focused on interests, needs and concerns, the things that really matter to people. So the role that Deputy President Booth played was really bringing us back to the issue. Well what's your issue in that? I've heard both parties. What's your issue? What's your issue? And it was really the referee. Uh, 
So uh, DP Booth played that referee role. Yeah, look, I think it's, it's extremely encouraging to see the Commission support this new approach process. Um, my dealings through previous roles in my career have always been simply at hearings in an adversarial approach. So we were very lucky that Deputy President Booth had had prior experience in interest-based bargaining and even more lucky that she was prepared, as some may not have, to attempt to facilitate that process in one of the most publicly industrial environments in Australia. So I think it, not only has it been a win for our business, but it's been a win for the Commission if there were people inside that thought that it may have been a folly or it may not have worked. The reality is it wouldn't have got off the ground, it wouldn't have started without the Commission steering it. It would have fallen over probably half a dozen times without the Commission playing that adjudicator role in the middle of it, far different to what it's ever been before. When we go in to a Commission, it's usually lawyers at 30 paces and everybody hates each other and we're ripping into it and there's been a history of how it developed. Uh, I would certainly not prefer to go back to the old days. I remember not too many years ago, we had more than 50 matters on foot in various stage of dispute, whether they be early stages right through to formal hearings at the Commission. So the cost to us in terms of management time, external advisor cost, business disruption, and that's only one side of the ledger. That would have been mirrored by the union in terms of their senior executive, their external costs, all of the other elements and costs that they and their, their members, our employees would bear was quite crazy in hindsight. So if we have an opportunity to keep this running and gain even more than we have now, it's logically the way to go. It's been an adversarial relationship for many, many, you know, hundred, uh, near a hundred years, you know, of, of, of strong conflict on the waterfront. And um, we've got a long way to go to change that. This is a good plank to do that because if each EA, we're not going to war, because that's what we used to do. We used to go to war, we'd each get on our sides and get in the trenches. This has been an avenue for us to build trust with our employees and we'll do what we say we'll do. If businesses are successful, then our members have work. If our members have work, then businesses are successful. That hinges on a relationship which is functional. I think there's been two main streams of outcome for Patrick and the MUA. Um, one has been a round of enterprise bargaining that was conducted in the fastest possible time they've ever experienced and uh, with an outcome that uh, was acceptable to employees and the employer um, and was happened without any industrial action. And that's not unimportant in the um, MUA Patrick world. Um, the second is that, uh, and perhaps more importantly, um, that outside of the actual bargaining for content in an enterprise agreement, there have been port by port discussions about changes to workplace practices that have been utterly critical to the economic viability of those ports and that's been able to be dealt with consensually because the changes have been able to accommodate and take into account the needs of both the employees and the employer. The funny thing about um, life really is it's about how you respect the person you're talking to or you're dealing with, right? So all this new approach really does is forces people into a room to actually go and unpack their egos a little bit, as well as unpacking the issues. And so the individuals concerned um, are, in my estimation, all um, heroes. Uh, they are all um, esteemed individuals. They've, uh, they've got um, wisdom and they've got patience. Well, I would uh, recommend it as a process. Um, you know, it's a general invitation to um, come to the Commission and talk it over, um, and then if you do have a willing counterparty, to move forward. I'd say it's the most fulfilling, one of the most fulfilling processes I've had in my professional career in terms of seeing an idea turned into a true reality. Um, though we're still in the early phases, so I'm a big advocate. For more information about new approaches, visit the Fair Work Commission website.